Hello everybody, and today I'm going to show you how to load 35mm film into two different types of 35mm SLRs. This Nikon F3 is going to represent a classic style of 35mm SLR, everything from around the 1940s or 50s through the end of film. Rewind knobs would be applicable with what I'll show you with this camera. And then I will also use this Nikon F5 which uh, is going to be a little bit hard to get entirely on camera at once, I won't lie, but we'll figure it out, to demonstrate how to load film into cameras that have automatic advance and rewind. So we're going to start with the vintage type of camera. Now, the specifics about your camera will be very, very slightly different, but the approach here will work for any type of camera that loads film in this manner. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the film back, just like that. Now, this is the film cassette chamber, which is where we're going to load the film. This is what your 35 millimeter roll of film will look like when you load it into the camera. We're just going to drop it right in like this. Of course, need to have the film rewind knob and post pulled up, and you just slide it into place. Pull out the leader a little bit. If you have an automatic shutter speed setting, try to set it to a manual shutter speed if possible. That will avoid long exposures when you trip the shutter right now. We're going to load the film into the take-up spool. We're going to hold the sprockets up against the film take-up sprockets. Advance. I generally advance an extra frame just to make sure it's being taken up correctly, but once it's gripped, that second frame is optional. Now we're going to close the back of the film of the camera. Next thing we need to do is set the ISO on your camera. This is going to be a little bit different for any camera. Uh, they will have the, the film ISO setting in a different place. On the Nikon F3, it is right here. You'll want to find it on your specific camera and then just adjust the film ISO to whatever you're going to shoot. If you shoot it at what's called box speed, if you have, let's say, 400 ISO Kodak film of some sort, box speed would be 400. You would set it to 400. Oops, that's not correct. That's 800. That's 400. Now, if you wanted to push it a stop, you would shoot it at 800. That would be giving the, cam the film less light, and you would want to then overdevelop. Pulling is going the other way. You could take 400 film and develop it at 200 ISO. There we go. And to underdevelop it, that's called pulling. So if you hear those terms, that was what we're talking about. But for the sake of today's video, you want to set it at your box speed. Okay, so we're using 400 ISO film. We've set it at 400. The next thing we're going to do is take any slack out of the film. Just gonna, this film's pretty tightly wound, but we're just gonna push that the direction of the arrow until it, we feel resistance. Next, we're going to advance the film until we get to the one. And I've left this out so you can see how the film rewind knob turns when you advance the film. Most SLRs, it's three frames to get to the, uh, the, the first frame. Now, you've gone through your entire roll of film. You've taken 24 or 36 exposures. We'll pretend that I have done that. What you want to do is then rewind your film. Some cameras like Olympus's have the rewind button on the front, but most of them have it on the bottom right here like this F3 does. So I'm going to hold down the film rewind button. Some cameras you have to hold it the whole time, some it clicks in place. You'll just want to be familiar with your specific camera about how it works. With the film rewind button pressed, we'll now rewind the film. At the end, you should be able to hear a sound of some sort as the leader comes off of the film take-up spool. And there we go. You just rewind the leader all the way into the film. Once you have rewound the leader all the way into the film, then you can open up the film back and dump the roll of film into your hand. If you're going to keep shooting, you simply grab your next roll of film, 
repeat the process and go and go about your day. If you're not going to keep shooting, close up the camera. Make sure that you trigger the shutter so that you don't leave any uh, tension on the springs that shouldn't be there until you use it again. Turn it off if your camera has an on-off switch and you are done shooting for the day. Now, if you're using a newer camera, one that has an automatic wind and rewind on it, what you'll want to do is load it in a slightly different manner. First, we're going to open up the film back as we would with the older style camera. Now, the insides here you might notice are a little bit different. There are some DX code readers here that the older camera did not have. These will tell your camera what film ISO you're using if you have DX codes. Oh, which this cassette does not, but this cassette does. This is the DX code. This will tell the camera what film speed you're using and how many frames are on that roll of film. If your camera does have a DX code reader and you do not have a DX code on your film cassette, you will probably need to manually set your film speed in your camera's interface, which is going to be unique to your specific camera, unless you're using a Nikon F5 and then it will look exactly like this one's interface. So this is where the film's gonna go. Over on this side, somewhere, there will be some sort of orange marking. That orange marking will indicate where the tip of the film leader has to go. You might be able to see down in that little corner, there's an arrow that points to a box. Let me get a little more light in there. There you go. That's probably a little bit easier to see. That little box that the arrow points to on this camera is where the film leader ends. On some cameras, it will look like a little circle or just some other sort of symbol. The general process is pretty similar. I'm going to drop the film cassette into the film cassette chamber, and we're going to pull out the leader, and we're going to drop it where that red indicator is. I pulled out a little bit too much leader, but that is okay, because what we can do is if I can get this flipped out, there we go. I can just take up a little bit of the slack with this camera. Not all cameras have a film rewind knob. So with this camera or ones that have a film rewind knob, I can take up a little bit of slack and get that to rest where it is supposed to be. You don't want to have the film bowing like this. You don't want to have it in an arch. When you close the film back, that can jam the system. So let's say, however, that I'm using a camera that does not have this film rewind and I really just pulled out way too much leader, just like that. Okay, not the end of the world. We're just going to take the film and we're just going to feed it back into the cassette just a little bit like that, just like that. Don't push down on the shutter. I'm pushing down on the shutter rails, these silver rails here with my finger, and we'll get it back into the cassette just a hair. And you'll notice again, that the film is now laying flat across the back of the camera. That's what we need. Next, we're gonna close this. Some cameras will automatically feed. This one I have to turn on and hit the shutter button and you'll hear it advance the film three clicks. Next, we're going to adjust the ISO. That again will be a little bit different for your specific camera depending on the interface, but I'm going to set this to 400 ISO if the buttons cooperate. They often do not on this camera. It is very frustrating. This is what happens when you leave batteries in your camera to explode. Sometimes the electronics become fidgety. Come on. There we go. 400 ISO. Finally got there. All right. Now that we've set the ISO, however you do that on your camera, the camera you, already, you heard already advanced the three frames and that is, uh, it is ready to now go. Whoa. So you can go through your entire day shooting all of your film. Some cameras will at this point automatically rewind the film for you. Some of them will not. On this camera, I'm going to hold the one and the two. And now it has rewound the film. At this point, we can go about opening up the back of the camera, wherever your mechanism for opening the camera is. Remove the film that we've used, grab our next roll of film to drop in, and continue shooting, or if we're done for the day, close the film back and turn the camera off. 
And that is it. That is how 35 millimeter film is loaded and unloaded into and from standard 35 millimeter SLR cameras, both of an older style and a newer style. Thank you everyone for watching. If this video was helpful and useful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track and that I'm producing and creating content which is helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding every couple of days and answering whatever questions you have to the best of my ability. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos about how to use cameras, photographic techniques, or the best practices for the tools of the trade, by all means, please subscribe and check that notifications bell to be alerted when new content arrives. And one last thing, thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos. Won't we, Steinbeck?